I should have been filming this. All I did was I used the smooth side of the Norton. I used the finishing stone. And I think I remember this is called uh, Arkansas Black, something like that maybe. And then I went over with the strop. And as you can see, I've just taken off a chunk of my arm. Well, a chunk of the hair from my arm. Actually hurts doing that. <laughs> Let's go in the middle where it's nice and hairy. Boom. But as sharp, as sharp as it come. This stone here takes quite a long time to get going, to do its thing. But once it's started, once it's done, it's done, isn't it? I'm gonna sharpen this one now. What I found easy about sharpening this blade, because the blades are so thick, it was easy to come to here and just have that bevel already. Because the blade inside here would not fit either of my Aritas. So I had to kind of gauge that one by hand. And just because the blade is nice and thick, it was easy, like I said, to have that angle. In fact, this old one from a trusty monster is nice and thick too. But that's a good piece of metal. Now let's try the other, the Lee Nelson. Right, mate. Already, maybe a little bit more here. This end, oh, yeah, that's good. Almost there. Good. Wow. Jesus, all I did was like touch it. Well, that uh, razor blade, the hair in my arm, I wouldn't dare. 
it's anywhere near my dandy bits right now. Who would be the braver soul to put this near the dangly bits? Let's see what happens here. Oh yeah, that, you can see. Shaving, shaving my arm. It's razor sharp. On the Stanley planes, I'm gonna go first 25. I think that's just like the standard angle and then once they're sharpened I'm gonna come back with a 30 I've read so that or people on YouTube have said that this means that next time you have to come back and sharpen your planes you don't have to sharpen as much and it's less time consuming I'm gonna do that When I built this bench, this plane's got a bit abused. My background is more computer science and entrepreneurship. I had a full page feature in the New York Times not that long ago, just a few short years ago. Full page feature, they brought in some industry experts to speak about what I was doing. It's a story to perhaps tell you all some other time. A really weird ending. My choice, of course. I'm kind of glad I'm no longer in Silicon Valley, especially right with the politics right now. I actually planned on going back to the US. Was it last year? Yeah, last year. This year and last year. <laughs> to the end of last year and this year. I want to go back to Kentucky. That's a great place. I spent like literally just under 10 years in Louisville. So most of you will know he's the hometown of the guitarologist. It was one of his videos which gave me the inspiration for the Simonator. For you, this must be like watching paint dry. What's going on, mate? Not quite there yet, are you? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Paul Sellers that I learned about doing the double bevel one here. Aldo, E Boy Gum, or it may have been Rex. He's one of the other woodworkers that I watch. God, this one's taken a long time, it must have got battered. I'm only getting a burr at this end at the minute. And this, I've been doing quite a long time without the even the camera rolling. Okay, the burr's moving up. Still a long way to go though. The base I'm, I'm using is like a Korean kind of chopping board of some kind. Some like Korean company had made a batch of them and the buyer backed out of something and they had like one and a half thousand of these. I think it worked out at like six pounds and like four pounds shipping. And the thing about Korean is just like granite, it's cut dead straight. In fact, I have some video that talks about Korean. and other usages for it in Luthery, if I still have it. I may have other ways. I'm limited for space to hold the video. Yeah, it's moving up now, it's about there. I should have maybe just started off with the black side, more aggressive. I make this up myself. I just use a mixture of mineral oil and I, I mix it in with a little bit of light engineering oil. I use it for all kinds of things. Well, I gave myself a bit of a manscape earlier. Shaved my hair, trimmed my, my facial hair, trimmed under my armpit. It was getting a bit long down there. I use the oil on my trimmers. I've got Andy's trimmers. A man who cannot do his own hair during the apocalypse probably won't be able to feed himself either. Come on. Aha, yes. Okay, have the burr. Take that off. I'm 
hoping I can get this one done and then I'll sharpen the number five and a half after this. Before I do that, I'll have to make some more of this stuff. Should have just left that in the thing, shouldn't I? There, bugger. Perhaps she goes, two little bit. So now we're gonna go with the, what I think is Arkansas black. The other thing I can do, I think, with this is like make a block that becomes a template. So for example, I'm pretty sure I've seen a video somewhere. Again, it may be Paul Sellers. I'll do, he boy gun. He made a little block and he put little blocks on it that had the distance of where you would get the angle from here. So if I mark those angles out onto a block of wood and then put a block wood there, so I know every time I need to sharpen that blade, I just need to, to butt it up against that little block of wood. I could then sell these. These cost about a hundred pounds. I think I'm gonna have to make up some more oil. So what we've got here, this is pure white mineral oil. It's food safe lubricant. The other stuff is just a tradesman machine chain oil. That's just like a light machinery oil. I had this squeezy bottle thing. Let's take that out, pour in. That's about right. So it's more of the mineral oil than it is the machine oil. Again, this is something that I learned on YouTube. I just top it up with the machine oil. Or do anything else. Let me just wipe this down. Otherwise, we'll just end up with new patterns, new orange patterns. Let's give it a shake up. That's it. This stuff I use on my clippers. The first oil that I used, I actually bought purpose made oil for Liberon. It was like eight or nine pounds a time, and I went for two of them quite fast, like real fast. And I thought, ah, screw this. So I looked online to see what was out there, and that's where I come across somebody saying to like use this. We're about there to be honest and feel that bar all the way across. It's definitely bigger on this side. Well the edges don't really matter so much do they because they can get rounded off anyway. I've seen like Paul Teller's teacher about that. That'll do. That guy is a ton of absolute knowledge. Didn't like the quality of his work, taking working in the White House, building something in there. I'm pretty sure I've read something about that. Yeah. Alright, that's enough. Job's a good one. I'm gonna strop it. Okie dokie. Need to remember this time to stay well clear of it like my fingers while I'm loading this up. Fuck, I did, I got myself again, look. Dang. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Here's the thing. I fucking have a glove right there to stop that. Where the fucking gloves are now? Oh, dang it, bugger. <laughs> look, let's have a look and see how sharp this is. <laughs> As if we need to check anymore. Look, 
that's clean off. Poof. Oh, yeah. Look how much hair is on there. Okay, let's put this one safely away, I think. Blimey. So I've got my little finger and now my thumb. Woodworking is dangerous, as you can see. I don't think I'm going to do the five and a half. I'm going to just put clean up and put this stuff away and maybe just start working on the video. I haven't actually recorded the post-mortem part. I'm going to just use like a montage again, some some of my earlier videos that just show up. This happened and that happened. I just keep all my stones in like, like a box so they can get messy. Number four is ready and my block plane is ready. And my violin maker's plane is ready. I've put the stuff away now and I'm not going to get onto them but I'll probably do some more of this tomorrow or the day after. I'll get some done soon. But I just need to get all my tools back up to spec. The actual guy who got me into doing this more than anybody has is Monty Akinna. I mean I've watched loads of people over the past few years. The one that said, what's your excuse? He's the one that finally got my cogs moving in the right direction. I was kind of in like a nowhere land because I was waiting on moving back to the US. So everything was kind of on hold. It's funny how our, our lives turn, huh? So my forearm feels naked. 